Welcome to the Fundamentals. In this video, I'm going to explain how inventory valuation works in a United States company, meaning Anglo-Saxon accounting. So I just created a product, but I'll create a sale order now for it. I'll say customer test. And now I'll choose a product that I have previously created, table. And I'm going to sell 20. Save. But first, let's look at the table. So in this table here, you'll see we have a storable. It belongs to all product category. This product category here is set up as a FIFO costing method and automated inventory valuation. Uh, when you select automated, it's going to show up these accounts. These accounts, one is for stock valuation. This is the journal that is used for all inventory valuation uh, moves. Now, this is what is called uh, stock input is the same as purchase or the cleaning, and you see it here. And you have stock output, which is sale order clearing, which is this here. These two accounts, they mean that purchase order clearing means that you have received the products, but you haven't yet registered the vendor build, or because the vendor hasn't sent it, or because you had time to register. The sale order clearing means you have shipped your product, but this product is uh, not yet invoiced. And so this balance pops up for uh, this kind of situation, right? Now, if we look at the inventory, it says this is a product that is manufactured. And if we look here, you'll see there is a bill of materials. This bill of materials, we have table leg and table top. Uh, legs, we have four, of course, and one table top. Now, the this product uh, the legs they cost 25 dollars each and so four times 25 is 100 and one table top 100 that does a total of 200 we sell it by 400 dollars right so let's go back to the sale order i will activate the bug mode so i have it activated here now let's duplicate and let's find something that you only find if you're in the bug mode, which is this small menu here that says journal items. These journal items, I'm searching for posted and known posted. Also, if I go into this, uh, I can change here, edit view list, and I'll add something which is the ID. It's going to tell me what order those entries are done so that we can follow up what, hap what happens here. So I'll just do an ID, we'll, move. we'll show this field, save close, we refresh, and we'll see the ID field coming here. All right. So clean slate, we don't have anything as you see on the accounting, no debits, no credits. So now I'm just going to confirm. When I confirm it, it's going to create these deliveries. And uh, at this point, we still don't have anything. Uh, and we can look, right? There's nothing here. I'll keep this one open, or maybe I just go and find the inventory now. And I'll go into operations and replenishment. And you see, I have a table that needs to be manufactured. So let's just uh, choose order automatically. And now when you choose order automatically, uh, we can again go to replenishment and you'll see, Udo is trying to buy the components, 80 legs, 80 ta 20 tabletops to order. Let's do the same thing. Let's just say, I just order it whenever it's needed and now we can go into the manufacturing uh well you can go into the manufacturing to check you have a manufacturing order uh but first we'll go into the purchase module and you see we have we had that those components all configured to be purchased from the wood vendor and now we have our components here ready to be purchased. I'm just going to take out the taxes so they, it's not confusing us uh, with entries about taxes. And I'll confirm the order and I'll receive the products and validate and apply. When I do this, Udo, as well as stock entries, it's going to automatically generate these stock entries. So you have, as you see, uh, from uh, uh, account stock valuation and stock interim, the flow of 2000. And that's what happens here. So we received 80 legs. That means a credit to the purchase or the clearing, which is the stock interim received and stock valuation. The same with the tabletops. And now 
uh, when we receive the vendor bill, we'll see an entry of 4,000 to account payable. Let's do that. So I'll go here and go to uh, the purchase order. I'll create a bill. I have to edit and I have to set my date to today. Uh, that's fine. We don't have taxes. So fine. Let's confirm. And I'll not register the payment yet. Uh, I could do that, but let's first look what happens here. So there you go. You have on the account stock interim to stock valuation. Uh, sorry, we can use this to order, right? And so we see we have 4,000 from vendor bill and to, uh, let's open here. Okay, count payable and uh, purchase order clearing. That's what you see here, right? I placed 4,000, it is 2,000, 2,000. It's just the same. Now, this next one is for the payment. We are going to pay it with the, with the bank account. Uh, well, it, we just registered the payment on the invoice, on the vendor bill. So if we go to vendor's bills and I click here, now we register the payment, create the payment. There we go. It's in payment. Now we can go, well, I lost this one. So let's go counting again, general items, and take out the post-it and order back from uh, this. And you'll see bank, bank, right? 4,000 and done. So this part is done. We got, we send the money to the supplier. We have less $4,000 in our bank account. Second step, let's consume uh, the manufacturing order and what's going to happen is uh, these 2000 are from stock valuation into production stock. This is an account you have to set. You have to go into the production production uh, production. No, you have to find locations and you see here and yeah, not stock. You have to Take this out and find the production and set an account for it. I set it in current assets account. And so it's there, right? And so what's happening is that when I confirm, it's going to consume the raw materials. And so if I overview here, I like go find the inventory, not the manufacturing here. And I'll just say mark has done. It's going to consume everything so it's done now go back to my journal items i click here it's going to refresh so we have nine that's what we was and now here you have stock and production right so these are the production stock valuation so it's between uh, production stock and stock valuation 2000 2000 those are the four entries generated now the tables yeah the tables they are they are produced so it's a finished product they are coming from production so it's a debit to production uh, sorry to stock valuation to credit production that's what the last one we see here okay and so at this point we have produce that is our finished product it's back on the balance of the stock valuation and now we're going to ship for shipping we just need to find our sale order here and then you take the delivery and then you validate apply there you go now you are in 15 now if i click you see you have 16 and 17 it's taking from uh account uh, stock interim delivered which is sale order clearing there you go and stock valuation there you go next step is send Invoice to the customer that is going to uh, first step from sale order clearing to cost of goods sold. And second step, uh, it's this one I added here. So invoice to customer. So we go into uh, the sale order again. And now we create an invoice regular. There you go. Confirm and register. No, first let's look. Yeah. So you have 8,000 from product sales account receivable and stock interim, which is sale of the clearing and expenses, which is cost of goods sold, 4,000. That's what we have here, okay? 4,000 cost of goods sold, expense, debit, 
and credit on the sales order clearing. And so uh, the send invoice to customer is from account receivable to product sales. The final step will be, of course, get the money into the bank, uh, which is this one, 8,000, 8,000. And there it is. Just a simple step. You understand the full flow of the inventory and registering the income and uh, the expenses at the end on the balances. And, and hope you liked it. See you next time.